नमस्कार हमारे इस सीरीज में जो हम लोग बहुत समय से सेंट्रल विस्ता पर एक सीरीज कर रहे हैं जिसमें हम लोगों ने वॉक द टॉक लॉन्ग सेंट्रल विस्ता किया स्टूडियो में सेंट्रल विस्ता के बारे में डिस्कशन की और हम दोबारा से अपने दर्शकों को बताना चाहते हैं सेंट्रल विस्ता का मतलब है राष्ट्रपति भवन से लेकर पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग को सम, आ, को इसमें शामिल करते हुए पूरा राजपथ और इंडिया गेट तक आ, लेकिन आजकल आप जानते हैं कि कोविड 19 का आ, आ, जो खतरा है इस वजह से हम लोग अपने घरों से इस पे बातचीत कर रहे हैं और इसी डिस्कशन को उसी सीरीज को हम लोग आगे जारी रखेंगे इससे पहले हम लोगों ने एक चीज को जानने की कोशिश की है कि जिसमें अलग अलग पहलू सामने आए हैं खासकर के कुछ ने कहा ये बहुत बड़ा स्कैंडल है क्योंकि इसमें कोई ट्रांसपेरेंसी नहीं थी बिल्कुल ओपेक था और कुछ ने कहा ये पूरा हेरिटेज के साथ छेड़छाड़ है और हिंदुस्तान की जो हेरिटेज है वो बहुत ही सामूहिक है और कुछ लोगों ने ये भी कहा कि ये पूरा ओपन स्पेसेस खासकर जो अर्बन कॉमन से उस पर पूरा इंक्रोचमेंट है और एक डिस्कशन में ये भी सामने आया है कि ये सब बातें तो है ही हैं लेकिन ये बहुत ही फैसेस्ट आइडिया है और इनफैक्ट बिमल पटेल साहब को एल्बर्ट uh, स्पीयर के साथ uh, जोड़ने की भी बात कही गई uh, आज जो हम लोग बात करना चाहेंगे उसी डिस्कशन को आगे बढ़ाते हैं और अब ये भी एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग पहलू सामने आया है कि जो डिस्कशन पहले सिर्फ आर्किटेक्ट तक सीम थी तो ये लग रहा था कि नहीं नहीं ये तो साहब सिर्फ आर्किटेक्ट्स का ही मामला है और किसी का कुछ इसमें सवाल नहीं है सो नाउ इट्स एक्चुअली क्रॉस दोज कॉन्टूअर्स इट्स इट्स क्रॉस दोज बाउंड्रीज एंड आउट फाइन lots of people even mainstream media actually engaging with this idea and especially when we are uh, engaging with the covid-19 and we require lots of resources uh, actually the political parties have also really jumped in and we have seen the congress party the communist party of india marxist whereby they have uh, actually lashed at the government and said look we require resources for the people uh, especially buying their kits and all it's a sheer waste of money to uh, isi डिस्कशन में हम लोग दो पहलुओं को आज बात करेंगे और हम बहुत आभारी हैं हमारे बीच में हैं बलबीर वर्मा जी जो कि आर्किटेक्ट हैं और एक जो सेंट्रल विस्ता कमेटी है उसके बारे में हम लोग बात करेंगे उसके मेंबर भी हैं और प्रेसिडेंट रहे हैं जो इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आर्किटेक्ट्स के पहले इसके प्रेसिडेंट थे बलबीर जी आपको बहुत बहुत स्वागत है और साथ में मंजू मेनन हैं जो कि रिसर्चर हैं एनवायरमेंटल रिसर्चर हैं और बहुत काम किया है उन्होंने खासकर इसका एनवायरमेंट पर क्या असर पड़ेगा मंजू आपको बहुत स्वागत है और साथ में वो सेंटर फॉर पॉलिसी रिसर्च में काम करते हैं तो और एक्चुअली इन्हीं दो पहलुओं पे हम लोग बात करना चाहेंगे एक तो ये जो सेंट्रल विस्ता कमिटी है हाई एवं सो आई कैन वी कैन सी यू या ग्रेट सो इसके सेंट्रल विस्ता कमिटी का मतलब क्या है और क्या इसका रोल है क्या इसको बायपास किया गया है या जो भी इसके पहलू है और दूसरा पहलू हम लोग इसके इन्वायरमेंट क्लियरेंस को लेकर और जैसा पिछले दिनों हाई कोर्ट में केस था फिर सुप्रीम कोर्ट में केस गया और अखबारों में भी आया कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा है कि अभी तो कोई काम होने वाला नहीं है तो इसलिए इस पर स्टे देने की जरूरत नहीं है आपका दोनों का बहुत स्वागत है बलबीर जी आपका भी और मंजू जी थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस या सो आई थिंक बलबीर लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद यू शुरू से आपसे बात करना चाहेंगे कि एक भी हमारे दर्शकों को अब ये थोड़ा कॉम्प्लेक्स से बहुत ही सिंपल की तरफ होता जा रहा है और हम चाहते हैं कि फ्रॉम कॉम्प्लेक्स टू सिंपल ये और भी सरल रूप में जाए कि ये जो सेंट्रल विस्ता अब जुबान पर आ रहा है पहले ये समझना ही मुश्किल था जिसमें लटियन से ये सब की जो बात हो रही है कि इसको लेकर एक कमिटी बनी थी और एक जमाने में बहुत पहले से कमिटी बनी थी जिसका बेसिकली काम है इसको देखरेख करना या कोई भी जो नई काम होना है यहाँ पर नई इमारत बननी है या पूरा जो कुछ होना है तो ये इसके थ्रू रूटीन होना चाहिए तो क्या आप बताना चाहेंगे कि एक्चुअली जो सेंट्रल विस्ता कमिटी है ये कब बनी और क्या इसकी रेलिवेंस है और इसका मैंडेट क्या है तिकंदर जी थैंक थैंक्स फॉर हैविंग मी हियर एज यू हैड आस्क दैट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इस सेंट्रल विस्टा कमेटी और ये कब और इसकी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्या है इसमें कौन कौन है इनफैक्ट इट वाज बिकॉज ऑफ द नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस सेंट्रल विस्टा एरिया एंड इट्स हिस्टोरिकल एंड आर्किटेक्चरल इंपॉर्टेंस the government in nine, way back in 1962 okay so after independence a government of india yeah. in the year 1962 decided to constitute a committee of architects and town planners so as to oversee 
the development in central vista and to advise the central government on any projects which come are to come up in central vista in form of either renovating or construction or even reconstruction of any of the buildings so then subsequently at that time when this central vista committee was formed there were four members who were representative of the national professional bodies that is two from the indian institute of architects and two from the institute of town planners india and there were five representatives from the government then again there was some addition alteration done to the constitution of the committee and finally as on today the committee incidentally has 12 members out of which eight are the members from the government they are even from the ministry they are the people working with the cpwd they are the people working with the dda and the representation of the professional institute is the same as four so this is what the central vista committee is anything in last many years since i have been a member of this committee for quite some time now representing the indian institute of architects anything i remember even when the curb stone on the road side was to be changed that that proposal used to come to the central vista and there used to be number of meeting there used to be number of suggestion back and forth then the cpw to ask go back to this then there was even used to be site visits by this committee to see the what the then since it was an advisory committee with all the members including the ones from the professional institutes and the government working as i told you earlier so there used to be lot of deliberations on this the i still remember a time when even these light posts in the central vista were supposed to be uh, were proposed to be changed because they wanted to accommodate the cctv cameras because of security understood you want to and then they had proposed that they will put new posts so then they were asked that why can't they use the same pole or even if replicate the same pole and then put the cctv camera within that that so it took lot of until today the the proposal is still pending but in any case no since the whole thing has come for total uh, redevelopment or whatever you call it there were proposals for rejuvenating for which cpwd had made lot of proposals but unfortunately none of these were given so i i think i have already explained you what yeah the, the mandate i i followed that yeah, yeah. sir but just ओके जस्ट टेल मी समथिंग एक चीज जो इसमें बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग आ रही है कि uh, जो आपने कहा पहले पांच और छ का कॉम्बिनेशन था मतलब uh, प्रोफेशनल्स का और अभी हम देख रहे हैं कि ये पूरा मेजोरिटी टेक्निकली uh, अगर आप बाबू ना कहें तो ये पूरा बाबू डम हो गया मतलब बेसिकली सरकारी अफसर इसको डोमिनेट करते हैं ये ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हाल ही में हुई है या काफी पुरानी है ये जो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हुई है जहां पर एक्चुअली गवर्नमेंट ने कंट्रोल और टेक करना शुरू किया है you know this was uh, done in 2012 2012 we yeah. are so i mean it's it's not it's, it's very recent that way. recently the only thing which what has happened is when you look at the when they say reconstituted yeah. in 2019 it was only because cpwd had changed the nomenclature of the chairman of the committee earlier the person was called additional director general of architecture now it is called additional director general of works but as i understand the within the framework of cpw the additional director general of architecture will be the additional director general of works anyway so, yeah. your comment i would uh, like to mention when you call it babudam i would not like say that because the reason is all of them who are there are the professionals architects or planners and some of them are yes no doubt there are two officers one from the environment ministry and one from dda from one from the urban affairs ministry but yeah. uh, all others are uh, planners and architects so interestingly i i don't want to counter you but i i i just i just finished reading a book by samuel stein uh, the capital city 
तो वो प्लानर्स भी कैसे बाबू बनते हैं मैं अभी उसको देख समथिंग वेरी इंट्रीगिंग जो बहुत ही मेरे दिमाग में आ रहा है कि एक्चुअली अगर इतना कुछ है कि लैम्प पोस्ट भी बदलना चाहिए था तो uh, मतलब सीवीसी सेंट्रल विस्ता कमिटी के पास आना चाहिए था जो बहुत अच्छी बात भी है तो सीवीसी का और हमारे डेली मास्टर प्लान का क्या रिलेशनशिप है वो मैं बाद में लेकिन मैं पहले उससे पहले मंजू से कुछ बात करना चाहता हूँ फिर हम दोबारा से आपके साथ इसको दोबारा से जोड़ने की कोशिश करेंगे और साथ में कि ये फिर अभी प्रोजेक्ट क्यों आए हैं और अभी इसमें क्या क्राइसिस हुआ है सो जस्ट होल्ड ऑन फॉर फॉर अ फ्यू मिनट्स लेट्स गेट मंजू ऑल्सो हाई मंजू सो यू लिसन बलबीर जी ऑल्सो एंड थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग Uh, just tell me uh, i mean before we go to uh, i mean what sorts of uh, uh, clearances have happened or actually the hashash manner in which uh, all these things have happened uh, i mean just tell me why is this urban ecology so important i mean in urban planning um, i mean why is environment so so important when i mean uh, can you just discuss sub, uh, urban environment silos or it is it ought to be a part of the integral uh, part of urban stuff and then let's let's understand what has happened actually and what has not happened what should have happened yeah 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 thanks for having me on the show uh, i mean i guess it's a question that answers itself if one looks around uh, what the city environments have become mm -hmm. and uh, i mean we are sort of uh, having to deal people living in cities and that's that's a, that's such a wide a uh, range of people right from the poorest people and we've been seeing these really horrible images on tv about who constitutes the city and who's leaving the city now <clears throat> so it's all of them and uh, people who live in cities uh, you know who made cities their home having to deal with all sorts of crises all at the same time whether it's to do with water whether it's to do with clean air and of course it's to do with the loss of uh, ecologies that we don't even know in we don't even know about the number of different ways in which they probably uh, you know improve productivity uh, you know reduce heat effects things like that tree ecologies so um, i feel that you know there's such a shortage of an understanding of urban ecology in urban planning and i'm saying this also because i i have largely worked on environmental issues in rural areas in the hinterland and uh, you know so looking at the impacts of mines and dams and things like that in the rural areas and it's so strange to uh, to think that uh, you know cities which are which have such a large concentration of populations uh, have the almost the thinnest regulations which uh, look at urban ecology and i think in your own show in the past you've done you you know you've done uh, programs on what happened with the aims housing uh, you know project and then there's the whole uh, you know gpra set of projects that very large set of projects that the government had proposed a few years ago and the east kidbai project i mean all of these if one looks at at least some of these recent large projects uh it's so clear that urban planning has almost uh sort of uh, completely shifted towards monetization of land and uh you know extraction of land for private profit purposes rather so do you find do, do you find a similar thing happening uh, with the central vista as well yeah land i mean i certainly I, i i certainly feel that a lot of these problems that uh, have are you know that are present in urban planning uh, and design issues which you know sort of don't uh, which don't uh, prioritize public purposes of land are very much part of uh, central vista as well uh, the the uh, the important thing is that uh, the important thing about central vista is that uh you know even though it even though we've been talking about central vista i mean you've done so many programs and you started even this session by talking about the central vista as a as a you know as a large space uh the regulatory process that okay so so let's discuss that i mean what what, yeah. what went wrong wrong yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah so so you know like um i mean uh, uh, so so the most recent uh, the most recent Uh, uh you know procedures that this project has gone through is what balbir ji was just describing which is the central vista committee and uh, the other is uh, that this project has been recommended by 
uh, what's called the Expert Appraisal Committee uh, for Environmental Clearance. So this is a process that is done under the Environmental Impact Assessment Notification where uh, you know, projects are to be uh, looked at holistically and assessed on the basis of very important and critical environmental parameters yes. so that at the end of the appraisal process, we know what kinds of impacts these projects are, uh, any particular project that is applying for environmental clearance is going to have. And that should determine the decision about whether the project should be approved or not. But I have worked for 20 years or more on the process itself. It's one of the most politically charged processes. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the outcomes of these processes have been so uh, one sided that uh, it's uh, I mean, it leaves with, it leaves us with very little hope that this is what will help us, you know, get through. Uh, this is our response to climate change and environmental crises that are happening on such a large scale especially in cities. So, okay, 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 Manju. I mean, so what is the problem with the process? Yeah, so I... So because me, because, because if, 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 if I could just please, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, but then I remember that uh, the EIA was challenged in the High Court, then the High Court uh, had presumably had uh, uh, told the, the government that, look, you have to come before the High Court and the, probably the judge was transferred. And we had a new judgment which said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, so, so with, with, with this project, uh, yeah. actually the, uh, the main issue that is in court, the main challenge that is in yes, court yes. through two petitions okay. is the DDA's change of land use okay. uh, for the project. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, I mean, uh, although the petitions are quite elaborate and they raise a whole set of issues, mm -hmm. uh, it is primarily the change of land use that is in court that is that is uh, that is under challenge and that's because uh, the dda's process for the change of land use was the first set of regulatory processes that started off uh, that the central vista was was put through the uh, the this expert appraisal committee for environmental clearance that i'm talking about that was the second set of procedures that the project went through. And uh, there were so many things that were troubling about how this process went, how this, how this project was put through the, um, the environment clearance process. For example, uh, you know, I mean, most projects are expected to uh, do a full detailed environmental impact assessment report. But strangely, urban construction projects like this one, which you know, the government doesn't, the government and the, the main consultant of the project, they, they, they always keep referring to this project as a project of national importance. But somehow, if one looks at how this project has been put through the regulatory process, it is so slapdash and, uh, you know, sort of urgently rushed through that it doesn't appear like we are dealing with a project of national importance. So this project was all it had to do was to fill up an application form. That's not an, an entire environmental impact assessment report. And the, uh, even the application form, the, the points that it asks are quite critical. Like for example, one of the questions in the application form is, uh, is this project going to have cumulative impacts because of other projects nearby? And since we're talking about this expert appraisal committee process, I want to say that the, the project that, uh, that was just granted, uh, you know, that was just recommended for environmental clearance by this committee, this very august committee of 13 members, um, it was, they only looked at the application form for the new parliament building which is just one part of the entire Central Vista project. And we know that already because the, the design contracts that were given were for the entire project. The government declared it as a large Central Vista project. The, uh, you know, the, so, so all along the discussion has been about a large project, but then they go and apply for an expert, uh, for an environmental clearance for just the parliament building. And the interesting thing is the application says it's for renovation and expansion of the parliament building. And then it ends up talking about building an entirely new parliament, parliament building yeah. Yeah. on the district park, which is right next, which is the neighboring plot yeah. Yeah. for 900 plus crores. Yeah. And this building is larger 
than this part, the existing parliament. So I don't know from what point of view we can call it expansion and... It's a real fraud. I mean, I mean what, what, what else do you describe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, very dis it's very misleading. Yeah. 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 So uh, two more questions, Manju, but we'll come to you a little later because uh, we'll like uh, Balbirji to uh, just come back again. Uh, Balbirji, I think uh, 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 you've heard Manju saying the August uh, uh, gathering of the CVC. Yeah. And probably you boycotted that August gathering. That's what... Uh, we, it's that's not that we boycotted it. Uh, so, 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 okay, sir, please, please, please sir, j just let me finish, sir. So, uh, 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 just tell me, so still, uh, as you've described that it, it's, it's of uh, great importance. And, but at the same time, actually, the, the functionality has been diluted in the sense that uh, more and more control of the government, uh, we can easily, easily witness that. So, but why still, I mean, the government could have really taken over. Why the projects are still rooted through the, through the Central Vista Committee? Uh, these projects are rooted through Central Vista. As I told you, that anything which was ever being done after 1962 was rooted through. That means that is before uh, that was uh, that 1962 means before that Shastri Bhavan and all these buildings were already there. And at that time, the government, in its wisdom, decided that maybe we should have some kind of an architectural control on this. And uh, so, accordingly, a uh, as I have already told you, this was formed. Now coming back to the present yes. uh, redevelopment, yeah. development and redevelopment of Central Vista. Yeah. Uh, the first meeting of Central Vista Committee, which was held, you know, our issue is also why everything is being rushed. You know, whereas I think tick marking in the boxes is being done definitely. They are saying that yes, we have taken it to Central Vista Committee and they have approved. Yeah. But that does not mean it is being rushed how do i say that this was being rushed even the first committee meeting which was held on the 27th of february for which a notice came on the afternoon of 25th february to all of us asking that the uh, subject of change of land use is to be taken up by central vista committee on a meeting to be held at 11 o'clock in the morning on 27th of february so suddenly we found that two of our colleagues professionals, one from the Institute of Town Planners and one from the Institute of Architects were not in Delhi and they were at a place that even if they had tried, one of them were in Northeast, even if he had tried to take a flight, he could have not reached. He had specifically written to them that for such a uh, pro, uh, the kind of project it is and it has a national importance and you are giving us only one and a half day to come and take up this project. And that also on a single line agenda. There are no details what is all about. So it is not proper to have this meeting. So what was done was it was just that they said that those two people couldn't attend the meeting. But then I was there at the meeting. I attended the meeting. In fact, that meeting went on for four and a half hours. And I was insisting that we can take up this subject of change of land use of such a huge area and which is a public area as on today only uh, since this has already been put on public domain by DDA who is going to finally do this change of land use and they have received 1292 objections why don't you put up those responses to those objections in front of this committee so that we should know that what the people of this uh, city or people of this country because these objections have also come from outside mm -hmm. but it was all ignored the only thing what they minuted in the minutes in my name was that I wanted some more facts so I decided not to agree with mm -hmm. I, I don't even know what does this mean okay. that I wanted the more facts so that means they want uh, they maybe they want to say that they didn't want to give me those facts so anyway fine so when we this was done and then the next meeting which was held on 24th April, you know, again, okay, definitely this time the notice came in advance, that is one week in advance, which generally is a reasonable period. But then they, these were the COVID days. COVID days, yeah. <laughs> we were not allowed to travel. Yeah. And suddenly, when we wrote back to them that it is this and okay, if we want to come to Nirman Bhavan, at least I wrote to them, there should be some arrangement that I, a person like me, can come to Nirman Bhavan. So, 
I did not get any reply except that on 21st evening, that means again the meeting is on 23rd, we received detailed description of some kind of a webcast meeting, which it will be, where we would like, we will, we are expected to join that webcast meeting and look at the complete building of parliament on a little screen, which I we found it very uh, difficult. In any case, we were all sitting in our houses. Today, I'm able to join this because I am sitting in my office. There is someone who had helped me to put on my iPad and do that. And yeah. because I'm not an expert on uh, all these things. So we wrote back to them. Incidentally, the other two members also, one from the Institute of Architects and the other from Institute of Town Planner wrote back the same thing that please postpone this meeting for a few days because we knew that after third and it was on 23rd. So it's 10 days are not going to matter. So postpone it. So when we received the minutes of the meeting, like we did not get any answer, but when we received the minutes, it just says that some of the members could not attend because of the uh, restrictions on travel. However, what the minutes say, because of the national importance of the project and the time schedule, it, uh, it was decided to go ahead with this project. And in one single line, it says it has been like, there is a very strange thing which I find. Generally, whenever we have been having these meetings, even for a smaller project, there used to be a whole list of comments, discussions, points, written, reason. So it's a one-liner. And it doesn't say uh, approved. It says no objections. <laughs> so I have not seen that yeah. in the minutes for last 12, 13 years. Yeah. Whenever I see, because was it being expected that as if it is coming to us only for objections? I don't think any project which come to CVC is for objections. It is for our advice or approval. And the government of India, yes, definitely have a right. But the reason it is called advisory group, which maybe I didn't mention in the beginning, CVC was made as a, an advisory group of uh, professionals to advise government on uh, these issues. So this is how this was done. Yeah. Yeah. But that was being done almost at a time when during a hearing in a case in the related matter in Supreme Court, as per the media reports, the Chief Justice himself told the petitioner yeah. that really during this COVID, no one is going to do mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the hurry? Yeah. And on the other side, the CVC says that we are in a hurry and we will do that. It is little. So what I can only say is today so, I am a little disappointed on this issue. No, I don't think the purpose of CVC is to rush these projects mm -hmm. and I, like I honor the uh, like I uh, honor the opinion of my co-members who are there, professionals who are there. But at the same time, I don't think they couldn't have waited for another ten days to let us also have our opinion, so that the opinion of the profession. The other thing which I would like to add here. Yes, sir which I in last few days have been thinking please, please. certainly why the government thinks that they are the clients. Mm -hmm. It is the public of Delhi or the public of India or the people of India who are the clients of this project mm -hmm. and everything is being kept away from them. They are what, not what does that mean, sir? What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Client, yeah. uh, client means what does that mean? Yeah. The, sir, what? I mean, I mean, what does that mean in common parlance? I will, the I will, in yeah, common please, part please. is, that you want to build a house, you own a plot of land. Perfect. You Perfect. come to me with certain requirements mm -hmm. and tell me that this is what you want. Here, the land belongs to the people. The land belongs to the city. The land does not belong to the government. The government is only a custodian. Now, they want to do something. They are taking away my piece of land. right? Now, maybe I am talking as a citizen, not only as an architect, but since I am aware of all these things, it is very clear that government has assumed that they are the clients for this huge project which is being built or developed in the public land whereas 
for a normal person i would say the public the people of this country are the clients or the owners of that land okay. they were the ones who should be consulted i agree even with the way it is being rushed do it in the name of doing the projects in a hurry so the cost don't go up and all that but at least present the details to the public you heard manju they are trying to avoid public hearing in case of environmental clearance by putting these uh, projects in front of the committees as piecemeal projects because otherwise this whole and even for the central vista committee the whole project should have come to us like why should i am be uh, i am being asked which of course i didn't see that also i am still wondering what that project has been passed because in most of the projects not only most every project which was done after change of land use whether whether it is vanijya bhavan at 16a akbar road or it is the office of the ministry of foreign affairs which was built which i believe is going to be demolished was with the stipulations from central vista that the fam norms and the height norms will be adhered to what the central vista says and if i remember correctly they were maybe about 30 meters i am uh, it's not exact i am remembering but what i read in the newspaper that the height of the parliament which they have where the central vista says no objection in the media because i haven't seen the proposal it says it is 42 meters i wonder why central vista also should do all these things once we have this stipulation fine sir last one one last question to you sir and then we'll switch over to manju once again uh, so what is the future now sir what is going to happen if if i have, if if i have if if future is I as, I, as i told you that i am personally and maybe many other architects are also disappointed the way these things are going on i say many other architects because i am representing in uh, that the way these things are being rushed right and i wonder why do they have us on these panels when they don't want to even want to have our opinions and they are trying to rush the the future as on sitting today sitting here or talking to you i cannot imagine the only thing i would ask the government let's even if we have to do it let's do it in the manner first let the people of this city or of this country understand what is being done where was the need why it is being done suddenly by saying because recently what we heard uh, read in the newspaper the cpwt says that they need to build this new parliament because to renovate the old building they have to build and so this is something new i am hearing i mean i didn't hear this before yeah, they, it came in the newspaper a statement by the cpwd officer i am little strain that when i want to renovate my house or when I, even if i want to renovate my multi storied building that does not mean i build another new building shift yeah, yeah. there and then do that yeah thanks sir i think that, but sir just last one word so according to the discussion that we've had with you it's only the pal new parliament building which is being which was there for the cbc time, for the, for, for the, the time. time perfect perfect but the change of land use for for the whole area for the whole so manju i think the two questions to you and then probably we'll try to wrap up uh, so has the, the the environment approval actually been granted now i mean where are we placed as far as the uh, environment uh, approval is concerned and is it all over or uh, uh, i mean where are we placed yeah 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 thanks for that question actually because there's been so much uh, yeah. information in newspapers and articles that uh, that there is some confusion about it i think it's uh, also with respect to the legal case uh. um so with respect to the the environment clearance uh, what the expert appraisal committee has done right now is to give a recommendation to the ministry of environment and forests so it is a rec- it is a recommendating body and they have given their opinions on uh, you know on this project and uh, their opinion clearly states their recommendation clearly states that uh, their opinions are uh, of for granting approval to the project are subject to the outcomes of the court of the litigation 
that is going on now and that's uh, that's the thing that they normally say when they go through these they go through these processes even when it is known and it is informed to them that there are serious issues that are uh, that have been presented to the court of law and that those need to be uh, sorted out before doing all of this work but they prefer to go through the route of saying that these are sub the clear the approval is recommended subject to the outcomes of the case uh, so the government uh, the the environment minister can still take a decision that uh, you know on the basis of these assessments or these appraisals uh, the project may have uh, been recommended for environment clearance but projects uh, project decision making is also a political decision no so uh, the government or the environment minister can clearly weigh uh, various other current situations like you know all the all the crazy you know dynamics that are going on right now with respect to covid and the economic crisis and take a much more prudent decision about the project so that is still a possibility so that's one that's one uh, that's one area where we could expect something uh, because this is an important decision for the government to make on the other hand is also the court case you know i mean there are there are two very serious uh, petitions in front of the court um the uh, the recent issue that, that happened is that the supreme court uh, so because these cases started in the delhi high court and then uh, were escalated to the supreme court and uh, the supreme court uh, has i mean in, recently the supreme court sort of uh, said that uh, the government is not likely to do anything in a hurry so there's no there's no urgency to to this case uh, but as as balbijio says saying the uh, the change in land use has been notified the expert appraisal committee has recommended environment clearance the central vista committee has yeah. you know yeah. said whatever it said yeah. Yeah. and so if the project starts construction now then the court has a very serious pay to comply issue to deal with in front of it because there are very big issues that have been raised in the in the court papers which and actually when one reads the court papers including not just the petitions but the responses from the government that's when you get a sense of what this project actually is you know for a lot of people it's still not clear that this project extends all the way up to the yamuna west bank you know 25 acres of the yamuna west bank are actually part of the project we keep saying it's the central vista but that's not true the plot number 8 which is on the change of land use plot is somewhere close to timarpur if i'm not if i'm not wrong so you know so i feel that there's a lot that still needs to be unpacked about this project and uh, all the information comes it kind of trickles out of these documents yeah i was i was i was amazed i mean you I, because i because i didn't want to bring that into discussion but since you've raised this yamuna stuff yeah uh, i mean there's no dpr to the project i mean since see i have i have served the city for 5 years i you know i've been the deputy mayor of simla and yeah. i don't i mean it's a it's a it's a real illegality being done i mean if if i could comment on that you know and it 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 actually deserves a first information report to be filed against somebody you know because without a dpr always evolving project what the hell is is this happening isn't it and instead what we have what we what we've got is actually a whole um, you know a series of presentations that yeah. this consultant has yeah. has gone about doing at different forums which also the consultant has picked Uh, so these are hand picked forums yeah. that uh, where the presentation has been made and each time the presentation is made as you've said in your earlier programs it's an evolving project so <laughs> when when it's a project that's constantly it's shifting yeah. it's not possible to actually yeah. even talk about an environmental impact assessment because yeah. we don't know the basics of the project the consultant himself or themselves are changing the nature of the project and so it's uh we're left in a in a really bad shape in terms of actually trying to do something good with uh with this you know thanks i think thank you so much uh, uh, manju and balbir ji aapka bhi bahut dhanyawad and uh, just to wrap up i think we'll we'll continue with the series but uh, i was like really really 
pessimistic you know in the beginning that now it's all over but as you've said no no the at least we have that political aspect still coming up um, the government can take a call though the government is, has already taken a call to just up uh, i mean uh, the way it was pointed out by balbirji that what is the rush for and uh, so so probably uh, uh, the way people are galvanizing and the way people are actually discussing that look uh, you know it's a, all it's all a question of ownership also no? the ownership of the central vista i mean presently i'm presently it's actually extended beyond the uh, the borders of the architects i'm so glad about that and actually uh, balbir ji uh, uh, yeah uh, thank a you so much for of, yeah. a lot of people are concerned with it i mean a lot the of number people of are petitions concerned. In fact, uh, from yeah. from the newspapers one gets yeah. to know that so yeah. many people have written to all these committees and authorities and the government a lot of people are actually concerned about it so let's hope that the central vista uh, uh, i mean uh, though i didn't pose that question maybe we will will park it for our future shows whether we should have the redevelopment at all or we should have a redevelopment in a transparent manner we will we'll park that question for our future shows but yeah thank you so much uh, but at the same time uh, i don't know probably that, that's that's my very utopian wish Uh, that you know uh, that whole issue of volkshall no uh, i mean that never ke- ke- came to to reality i mean let's hope a similar <laughs> redevelopment uh, have, i mean the kind of uh, redevelopment takes place in in the bindu central stuff thank you so much for joining yeah thank, thank you, you. Yeah. Thank thanks you. a lot thank you yeah.